Welcome back, baseball fans, to the Summer 69-72 Carryover League. We are back again, this time in the National League, with the last two first place teams playing for seeding purposes. Mets and Vegas. Uh, Vegas is a surprise team this year. Cinderella's class slipper taking uh, the lead in that division. They were in last place last year. And the Rockies were in first last year, and they're in last this year. That's a tongue twister. So, the Mets. It's been a decent year. Nothing incredible. Um, they lost four out of five to the Braves. They got swept two straight by the Red Sox. Hmm. It's kind of meh. And, but they did beat up the predictable Phillies, they beat up the Marlins, they beat up the Cubs. None of those teams are particularly strong. But what's going on and what needs to happen? What is up for the stakes today? What are the stakes of this series? Let's take a look. Both the Mets and Vegas come into this game 5 over 500, so it's a simple best of 5. So the series started in Las Vegas. That division uh, was... Every division gets a home field across the, the leagues here. East, Central, you know, East, North, Central, and West. So that's why the Vegas team got home field. But in game one, Tom Seaver, the ace, and where everything has to fall, against Woody Fryman, a great pitcher for the Vegas team, and the Mets quickly jump out early with the offense, and they get six quick runs early, more runs late, and it is a big story that Tom Seaver throws a complete game, one blemish, he still has trouble keeping the ball in the yard at times, solo homer is the only run, but we'll take a nice complete game, no walk, nine strikeout performance from Seaver, and the Mets look like they want to storm through this series. So what happens in game two with Jerry Kuzman? Well, good news for the Mets. They do it again, and again, finally, Seaver Kuzman are the deal. We've been wanting this all year. Kuzman, four hit shutout, one walk. One walk in two games by Mets starter Seaver and Kuzman in 18 complete game innings. Tug McGraw never even put his uniform on. He was at the uh, casino, at the slot machine. He was not needed for these two games at all. 3 nothing win. Met offense started to do the predictable, you know, strand runner thing on. But three runs was more than enough. And now it's getting exciting for the Mets. Let's take a look at the overall standings now. In the National League, and you may be, if you've been following what's been happening with these first place teams, the Reds won three straight. The Red Sox won two straight. The Mets have won two straight so far. And when you look at the overall standings, this is what's happened to the National League. Of course, the Reds are way up here. So the Dodgers, remember, they lost. So they're just 5 over 500 now with a 561 percentage. And it is the Mets who we thought this could happen. They've improved their lot here. Now they're a 20 and 13 team. And now that looks this looks like the Miracle Mets. Four and a half game lead. That'll be, they'll win the East. They probably can't catch the Reds, but they should be able to get a win in Shea Stadium to stay at least six over 500, if not eight over 500, if they win this one. So they'd love to win this game and punch a number two seed ticket and be off. Do not have to play in the wild card round. That's what the Mets' goal is. Retool their pitching staff, so all we see is Seaver, Kuzman, Matt Lack the rest of the year. They won't have to use their number four starter, Don Cardwell. For Vegas, it is disappointing to lose the first two games at home, though they probably will hold on. Uh, if they get a win, they will probably hold on. If they get swept and they're just two over 500, anything can happen. But it's been a Cinderella season. As the clock struck midnight for Vegas, I don't know. But we are now at Shea Stadium. The crowd knows what's going on. They, they, you know, they have brooms. There are brooms all over this place. And this is a super expansion team. The Mets should really du be dusting these guys anyway. 
And they need this. The Mets really need this just to scare the rest of the National League and all of baseball. The 1969 World Champions. So, today, from Shea Stadium, not good news for Las Vegas, Ron Herbal. Who? Ron Herbal, of course. Ron starting, the number four starter for Vegas. For the Mets, John Matlack, the rookie, 72 Matlack card, having a huge year for the Mets. He's just watched his teammates Seaver and Kuzman throw complete games. He's been the best pitcher all year for the Mets. Only one blemish on his record. And let's get started from Shea. Ken Berry leads it off, 67. Single one of 14, rolls to 14, gets the single. Tommy Davis, 6'10", bouncer to short. This is Bud Harrelson. This is a 6-4-3 double play. This is how the Mets build their team. They're not going to lead the league in hitting anytime soon, but they make sure that Buddy Harrelson's a 1-E-17 at short to make that pitching staff even more dominant. And now we have two outs. Julio Gote skies the shallow center field. All right. Joe Foy leads off for the Mets. 54, pops the first. Wayne Garrett, 1-7. Let's take a look at Wayne's card. Wayne can play second and third, and he does. He often starts a game at second base and then moves over to third because he, he's a two at third base, replacing Foy when they bring Bobby Heisen. 1-7 uh, is Homer, 1-14, to and he can't get it over the wall. He rolls a 16. That's a double, and the Mets are rolling again. They have scored in the first inning in the first two games, which means they've led for 18 out of 18 innings. And now, their team MVP, Cleon Jones. 57, bouncer to short, but Vegas has a good defense as well. Kubiak's a 2-E-19 at short, and he makes the play. So with two outs, it's Ken Singleton. He's a new Met. His 1970 Met card. Let's take a look at it, by the way, since we're doing it. Uh, it doesn't look like it's an amazing card, but he's having a fantastic season. Uh, he was second in hitting in the National League before the All-Star break. Kind of a cool little power walk thing against righties and single thing against lefties. Kenny, 43 off Herbal, skies it in the left field. This is Tommy Davis, who is a 4E16 in left field. And that is your double dot dot dot. Ken's on second base for Tommy AG. 2-7, he is a K. But the Mets have a 1-0 lead. Aurelio Rodriguez, a.k.a. Original A-Rod. 2-12, pops the third. John Bacabella. Excuse me. John Bacabella, 2-6. Single, 1-15 to 15 is a single. Steve Whitaker, 2-3, pops a short. Jeff Torborg, 68K. You know, if Jeff Torborg is batting seventh for you, you might not have the best offense. Just a word of warning there. So, bottom of two, Ed Cranepool, 39, pops to second base. Jerry Grody, 512, second X. 2E6, this is Tim Cullen. 2E6, and he gets the single, cheap single off a of two second baseman. Vegas has decided to go with a really strong defense this year. Just a review, Tim Cullen's a 2E6 at second, Kubiak's a 2E19 at short, and original A-Rod is a 1E19 at third base. Ken Berry is a 1E0 in center field. So that strong defense has really helped uh, keep games tight for you know a team with a fringe roster otherwise. So Grody's on at first for Bud Harrelson. 1-6, first B. A stealing Bud with two outs. He's going to attempt a stolen base off Torborg, and he's safe. Runner, runner at second for Frank Johnson. 45, Frank Johnson lines the second base. We go to the third. It's Kubiak. 55, bounce it to short. That's a black hole. It's just gobbled up by Harrelson. Tim Cullen, 6'10". Same thing, short X. Gobbled up by Harrelson. Third ground ball X to the shortstop. Nada. Ken Berry, 56, second X. This is going to be Garrett, who's a 3E10 at second base. And, unfortunately, 
Yep, three ten. He kicked the ball. Not a good look there, Wayne. And it's Tommy Davis with two outs. 55, short X, <laughs> again, and it's Buddy, again, and the inning's over. So four ground ball Xs to Bud Harrelson, and you see how, why I love to get a 1E17 at short. He'll make, if you're a 1 at short, you're in the league. I, I find all the ones who, at shortstop, they're in the carryover league. I don't care. I had Chuck Scrivener, the 083 Chuck Scrivener in the league one year when he hit 083 because he was a 316 at short. And the regular shortstop for that particular team was a 4048. And that was kind of silly to do something like that. I just thought I would do it for fun. So, bomb of two. By the way, that was a Mets team. I think it was a 7781 Mets team I did that with. Joe Foy leads off the third. 410, pops to short. Wayne Garrett, 2 7, single one to nine. Lines out on a 19. And with two outs, it's Cleon Jones, and he skies the center. Herbals keeping his team in the game. Top of four, Julio Gote, 39, left. A Rod, 55, short X again. That's the fifth or sixth one. John Bacabella, 1 8, single. Steve Whitaker, 55, short X again. Matlack. He came to the right team, or at least uh, he's been buying six packs for Bud Harrelson pretty regularly. Ken Singleton in the bottom of the fourth, 2-8, okay. K. Tommy AG, 2-6, K. And with two outs, Ed Cranepool, 110, double, one to nine, double. With two outs, it's Jerry Grody. 312 walk and with two on and with two out the man of the hour bud harrelson can he do it with his stick 53 off herbal is first c not even next ron herbal is keeping his vegas team alive it's just one nothing here's torborg 511 a strikeout kubiak 25 a line out and tim cullen 35 Tim Cullen get, will get a double one of five single off his card. And with two outs, it's Ken Barry. 39, Barry walks. And now it's getting interesting as Tommy Davis, the all-star. Let's take a look at Tommy's card. He's having a huge year. He is the all-star representative of Las Vegas. He was hitting 370. His, this particular card will get, hit you 324, but he's ha had a year uh, hitting 50 points better than it, and th this is no better time than to come through with two outs and two on in the fifth inning. The pitch to Tommy Davis, 47 off Matlack, no sir, three finger, caught him looking, Davis slams his bat to the ground, he thought it was outside, but he got him on a called strike three. One nothing game in Shea, let's pause a moment for station identification. This is the Shrimp Trawler video channel. Este es el canal de videos de camaroneros. Darn, that can is empty. Well, now it is. Bottom of the fifth, one zip. Frank Johnson, 34, hit by the pitch. Joe Foy. 2-5, oh no, 6-4-3, double play. Wayne Garrett, 2-5, second. And the Met offense is doing what they like to do. Force their pitchers to throw shutouts. So, top of six, it's Julio Gote. Julio, 55, short X. I gotta plug the one in here this time, and a 17 in here this time. Doesn't matter, he gets the GBA. If the result for shortstop is like a three uh, and the fielding rating isn't out, I don't even switch the numbers up. Uh, the stat I do is if the if the p player fielding rating and E rating is worse than the, the player's actual results and then there's an out recorded, I don't waste time by plugging in the proper rating and E rating. Uh, but that time I had to do it. So... That explains that. Aurelio Rodriguez, 46, skies the center. And with two outs, it's Bacabella, 39. Bouncer to short. Matlack has been delivering all year for this team. A four-hit shutout. Bottom of the sixth. Ron Herbal, though, 
he is dealing for his team. Cleon Jones, 48. Single one at 18. And he rolls a 19. And suddenly Met fans are squirming in their chairs a little bit in uh, balmy uh, Queens. Ken Singleton, 2-5. Bounces the second. And Tommy AG, 68, is a base hit. Uh, who's catching? Torborg, minus one arm. Uh, AG's going to go for this one. And he's dusted on a 19. So they got aggressive, trying to force things a little bit. Could not do it. Gets, gets thrown out stealing. Top of the seventh. Matlack against Steve Whitaker. 65. He's going to get on. Double one to 12 is a single. Jeff Torborg. 65 again. And I knew if I said something uh, about Torborg earlier, it was going to come back and bite. And 65 off of Matlack is triple one to two, single dot dot. And now you got runners on the corners. But you got Kubiak, Cullen, and Ken Berry coming up. Matlack is a starter seven, so the bullpen is up. Prezella, Acosta, McGraw. They could match up any way you want it. Lefty, 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 righty, righty, lefty, righty, righty. They got all things covered in that Met bullpen. Runners in the corners, nobody out. They're going to bring it up for Kubiak. 1-6 for Kubiak is a 6-3. So the runner from first goes to second. Still bring it up for Tim Cullen. 1-7. Skies the center B question mark. We're going to have a throw here, I believe. Maybe. Whitaker. Steve Whitaker is a 14 runner. 15-16. And the arm of a G, if it's minus three, and I believe it is, he's being held up. So here's the strategy. Here's the rules of the game for away teams running. You can only run on a 14 or better. And let's plug this math in for you so you understand what's going on. Whitaker, his running is 14. So plus 2 makes it 16. But you take the Tommy AG arm and it's minus 3. So that makes it a 13 chance, which means the third base coach grabbed his player and said, no, 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 you're staying here. So... Maybe that was a smart thing to do because Ken Berry will bat with two men in scoring position with two outs, and a single could give the Vegas team a lead. Second and third, two outs in the seventh. Berry hits lefties slightly better than righties, but we're keeping the kid in there, Matt Lack, throwing the shutout. You know, you could bring in one of the great relievers, but we love our Matlack. And here we go. Ken Berry with two on and two outs in the top of the seventh. The pitch to Ken Berry. 38 is a sky to center field. And the Mets get it out of the first and third jam. one nothing. Bottom of the seventh. Stretch time here in Shea. We've been listening to the wonderful Lou Reed Hit first of his solo records after the VU. 72's, I just call it the egg record, the one with the big Fabergé egg on the cover there. Um, yeah, Lou Reed's first record. Awesome. It's the best one here. Oh, Ocean. That's the, that's the killer. All right, bottom of the seventh. Ron Herbal is a starter seven. He's pitching uh, his mind out. One good thing to remember about this particular game is that this is not an elimination game. You know, Vegas does not go home. They're not, their season's not over. This is just seeding. So if they were to get swept, it would be disappointing, but they have, there's still more baseball for them. So they're getting some valuable experience. It's a one nothing game and they played this game with defense in mind going with Kubiak at short is a 2 19 and the defense has stopped the Mets from scoring in a lot of situations. So in the bottom of the seventh, Herbal, vulnerable against lefties, he'll have to deal with Cranepool and Bud Harrelson this inning. Let's see how that goes. Ed Cranepool leads off the bottom of the seventh. 66 is a fly ball to right. Jerry Grody to the max. Let's take a look at Jerry Grody's card. This card only hit you 252, but I also hit you 252 as well. Um, but yeah, minus three arm catcher. Again, helping that pitching staff. 2 9, triple 1 to 9. It's another single. 
Bud Harrelson. Mm, I don't I don't like to bunt with one out. Maybe if nobody out, I would have bunted. But he's better against righties anyway. This is a tricky spot for Herbal, who's not good against lefties. But it's not like Bud Harrelson's going to scare you too much. Um, so he'll pitch to him. 1-8, and of course it's a mistake. It's a base hit to right field. Grody will hold up at second. And now you've got two on with one out. And boy, they really want to lead this herbal guy in there because he's really pitching well. And you've got Frank Johnson. Again, the Mets do not have a you know, great offense. Um, Johnson mostly known uh, for his defense in right field. Let's take a look at Frank Johnson's card. He actually played for San Francisco in 1970. First and second, Frank Johnson will bat against Ron Herbal. Here's the pitch. 47 is a walk. That breaks Herbal. And that'll do it. Six and a third for Ron Herbal in a one nothing game. And now you got to dig into a kind of shaky bullpen here. You got Foy, Garrett, and Cleon Jones. You kind of like to bring a lefty in if you could, so that when Garrett comes up, they'd pinch hit for him, and you go righty righty after that anyway. But yeah, you know what you got to do though. You have to go to your closer because you're down 0-2 in the series. Jim Rowland is the closer for Vegas. And he's got to come on in the seventh inning because their team is down 0-2. And he has to make this keep this a one nothing game. So the bases are loaded, one nothing. Bases are loaded in a one nothing game. Jim Rowland will come on in to face Joe Foy with the infield up. Let's take a look at Joe Foy's card. Love all those positions at the top there. Can play everywhere but catcher. And an ace stealer, a good base runner. When he's not hitting for average, he can get some walks. 262 card. This is a 1969 Kansas City Royal Joe Foy card. Bases are loaded. The infield's up. The pitch to Joe Foy. 37 is ball four. That's a killer. 2 nothing Mets. And now you got Garrett. Now this is interesting. I think maybe you leave Garrett in here. The bat. I know he doesn't hit lefties very well. Yeah, and you have Cleon Jones up next anyway. So, yeah, I'm going to leave Garrett in the here, in here and hope he doesn't hit into a double play. Wayne Garrett will bat against this lefty with the bases loaded to one out. Um, Vegas is still playing the infield up. They can't afford another, another run to score. The pitch to Wayne Garrett. 6'10 off the rolling card is a bouncer to short. They brought the infield up, and he's a 2 19 at short. And for the infield up for the road team, it's a field, it's a four set at the plate, but I don't do the 6-2-3. That's one of my home field advantages with the infield up and the bases loaded. Home team, you can get a 6-2-3 double play. Away team, I'll make it a 6-2. So he gets the runner out at the plate, but Garrett legs it out. So the bases are still loaded, but there's two outs now. And it's Cleon Jones, Jim Rowland. Let's take a look at Cleon's card. He was an all-star. Here is the at-bat of the series to this point. Cleon Jones with the bases loaded and two outs with a 2 nothing lead here in the seventh inning. The pitch to Cleon Jones. 49 off rolling his ball four. And now we have a 3 nothing lead with six outs to get for the Mets, and they're feeling it. Ken Singleton. The pitch to Kenny Singleton. 1-8. Let's take a look at Singleton's. Oh, we looked at Singleton's card earlier, but we'll look at it again. 1-8 is single dot dot. And that blows this game wide open. But not that guy scored. This guy scores. These two guys scored in the single. So you've got runners on the corners. It's now 5 nothing with two outs. And Tommy Ag. 68 off rolling is a sky to right field. So the Mets bat around. They leave two men on and score four runs. And it's a 5 nothing game. Interestingly, Matt Lack put two men on. Let's leave him out there, though. If he puts two men on the eighth, he breaks. Then, then we can hook him. So, but the Mets, before that inning starts, they are going to bring their last defensive puzzle piece. Bobby Heiss will come on in. He'll come in for Singleton. 
and play second. Garrett goes to third. Foy goes to DH. So top of the eighth, Tommy Davis and a, with a 5 nothing lead. 69, ball four. Julio Gote. 36, ball four. Well, there's that. Two straight walks for Matt Lack, and I guess I should have hooked him. Seven innings. He's broken. He's going to come out with six outs to get and a five-run lead. We got a righty, righty, lefty, righty. This sounds like Cy Acosta. Because you know A-Rod and Bacabella are not going to be pinch hit for. So Cy Acosta will come on in the eighth for the Mets as a dominant righty who gets righties out with McGraw and Frizzella warming. So it's it, uh, original A-Rod, first and second, nobody out against Acosta. Here's the pitch, 6'11", left X. This is Cleon Jones. He's a two in left field, a two E three in left field, and a fly ball B. John Bacabella, 4'4", four, four. third X. The new third baseman is Wayne Garrett, who started the game at second base. So Wayne is a three E ten at second. He's a 2, E28 at third base. A 2, E28, and then he makes the error. Wayne Garrett makes the game interesting by booting a ground ball. Now you have Steve Whitaker. Hmm. Well, let's, you got the bullpen. You pay him the big, the big dollars. Let's go start using it. So he'll leave. Whitaker is a left-handed batter who hits lefties just as good as righties. So I'm going to go bring in Danny Frisella. Let's take a look at Danny. As you can see, he's a righty who gets lefties out. And he'll come in to face Steve Whitaker. With the bases loaded, one out, playing back. The pitch to Steve Whitaker. Let's look at Steve Whitaker's card. This is the type of player uh, expansion teams end up with. He was a Seattle pilot in 1969, hit 250 and 116 at-bats. Interestingly... If you uh, you saw on that card, uh, his batting, and it's R. And with pencil, I wrote in L as left-handed. This guy was a left-handed batter. And Stratomatic made a mistake and printed him as a right-handed batter. So I caught that when I looked at his baseball reference as I was looking it up. So as a left-handed batter, this guy's much more valuable as a lefty who can hit lefties and righties. And that's how he ended up in the league. So the bases are loaded with one out, playing back, Steve Whitaker. Here's the pitch to Steve. 34 is a four, six, three, double play. Frizzella makes the pitch, gets his team out of the inning, and it's five nothing still. And the place is rolling in Shea. Bottom of the eighth now, five nothing game. Crane pull against Roland. He'll stick, stick around, he's got good defense at first. Crane pull, three, three. Rolls a 3-3 as well. Lines a second. Jerry Grody, 39, bounce the third. And Bud Harrelson. He's probably the uh, extra spicy player of the game with all the great defense. He, he, he backed up Matlack with earlier, and his single was a big hit in the seventh inning rally. 36 is a bouncer to short. We go to ninth. It's Frizzella with McGraw warming. And it's Torborg, Kubiak, Cullen. Former Met, Art Shamsky is available on the bench. As well as Ramon Webster and Ron Hansen. So batting for Torborg will be Ron Hansen. And with that, they're going to go straight to Tug McGraw. Rather unusual, 5-0 shutout, and the closer's coming in in the ninth. McGraw dominates right-handed hitters with a screwball. Not very good against lefties, but in the ninth inning, he will not have to face a left-handed batter. As that keeps Art Shamsky on the bench, unless the Mets decide to bring him in. Excuse me, unless Las Vegas decides to bring him in uh, for a home run shot. So here's Ron Hansen as a pinch hitter against McGraw in the ninth. 4-12, sky's the center. Ted Kubiak. 
And let's do it. So here comes Art Shamsky. Let's take a look at Art. He's going to come in and pinch hit. A rather unusual lefty-lefty situation, but they recognize that McGraw's screwball is exactly what Art wants to uh, swing at. So Art Shamsky will pinch hit here for Kubiak. The pitch. 46 is going to be a single off McGraw. So that paid it off. That worked perfectly. Tim Cullen's up. <laughs> I could really get nutty and have Ramon Webster bat for him. That would be funny. Oh, what the heck. It's a 5 nothing game. Let's try this bizarre strategy. So I'm bringing another left-handed pinch hitter in against McGraw. And it's Ramon Webster. Let's take a look at Ramon Webster's card. I mean, you're down 5 nothing. It's, you need a miracle at this point. So Webster has some walks on his card against lefties. But it's really McGraw's card that you want to get the hit off of. So Ramon Webster, the third straight pinch hitter, will bat. 54 off the McGraw card is a sky to center. This is Tommy Ag in center field. Who's a one, and he makes the catch. So with two outs now, we have Ken Berry. The pitch to Ken Berry, 6-10 off McGraw, is a bouncer to third. Again, it's... Wayne Garrett is a 2 28 at third base. And this time, Wayne makes the play. The game is over. And the New York Mets have made the first big move of the year. They've moved into the number two seed in the National League. And this is the kind of team that needs that. They need that kind of edge if they want to upset the Cincinnati Reds in the, in the National League playoffs. So another three game sweep in the top seed round. Tom McGraw gave up a hit in the ninth. Frizzella got that double play in the eighth. Acosta got his guy out. So nice relief work. And again, the Mets will often go with all three of these guys because they like the matchups. Matlack gets that win, gets a six hit shutout. The Met pitching staff was outstanding, dominant for the first time. Again, again, I know it's against a weak Las Vegas team, but we saw that Las Vegas, you know, had been overachieving this year. Uh, only one run in three games off of Seaver, Kuzman, Matlack. Stunning. Roland came on in the eighth and just could not finish that inning off. He gives up a walk, a walk, and a single. A hit, two runs, and two walks. For Jim Rowland, that was kind of the killer there. Herbal gets a loss. He, he tried. He gave up seven hits. Is charged with three runs. Those are inherited runners. All scored. Everything was earned. Three walks and three strikeouts. 1-0-0-9-0-1-0-8-5-8-0-7. And let's take a look at the year-to-date stats. For the Mets and Las Vegas teams. Not all is lost for Vegas after being swept. It's possible that they might get into second place if Portland gets hot. But then they can play themselves back from second place in the first place in the third round of this tournament. The Mets can probably go home and relax now. They did what they needed to do. It took them a while to get hot. With the pitching staff, they're 21 and 13 now, eight games over 500. I don't see anybody getting a better record than them, so they'll probably have a number two seed. Hitting 258, I said if the team could hit 250, they're winning the National League East, and they are. The ERA is is shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. It's down to 309, which again is even what's even more startling about that 309 ERA is that the Boston Red Sox team ERA is 234, 70 points better than the Mets. That's very scary for the America League, at least. So looking at the Met pitching, Seaver, Kuzma, and Matt, like all got wins in this series. But Tom Seaver, his year-to-date ERA is 397. And that's just kind of meh. You know, just too many long balls, really. Kuzman's 344. That's okay. I mean, these are good ERAs, don't get me wrong, but they're supposed to be better than that. It's the kid, the rookie, Matlack. 
Six and two on the year. With a buck fifty ERA. That's the guy who is lighting it up for the Mets this year. Cleon is having the MVP kind of year. He's 47 for 136. So Cleon's hitting 346. I mentioned Ken Singleton. What a big year. What a big addition he has been. Uh, they needed a corner outfielder badly. And uh, they found Singleton. Um, eventually Singleton gets traded to the Montreal Expos and then the Baltimore Orioles. But Singleton's 1970 card is hitting 363 this year for the Mets. That has been uh, the, one of the bigger reasons why the Mets' offense is doing this good. So, year to date now, we have played 552 baseball games. The league is hitting 259 with a 386 team ERA. And we have one more series to play of first place team matchups before we start eliminating uh, teams again. Thanks for checking out this video and we'll see you next time.